ఇంకొక ఇంట్రప్షన్ ఏంటంటే ము ముప్పై మూడు కోటలు కట్టుకోగలిగిన సామర్థ్యం ఉంటే ఇంకొక అంతకుముందు తెలుగు అనేది ఒక ఐదు వందల ఏళ్ళు అంతకన్నా ముందని కూడా మనం ఊహించవచ్చు వెనక్కి వెనక్కి వెళ్తే పరిశీలించిన తర్వాత తెలుగు హిస్టరీలో కొద్దాం ఒకసారి ఆంధ్రుల గురించి మనం మాట్లాడుతున్నాం అక్కడ నుంచి మన తెలుగులో కొద్దాం ఒకసారి మీరు అది నౌ ఐ థింక్ వన్స్ వి ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ దట్ ఆంధ్రాస్ వర్ in the peninsular india hmm. and their origins are from the krishna uh, delta we need to answer one simple question were they telugu people hmm. is andhra and telugu the same mm -hmm. so here we need to understand the uh, that a number of linguistic theories and then i mean you need to have some kind of idea as to how these dravidian linguistic uh, people or the uh, dravidian speaking people where they originated where they were earlier and in which direction they moved if we understand then we will be able to establish certain timeline for when telugu got separated from the dravidian stock and the rest of the languages got separated from the dravidians antra anedi ippudu varaku mana maatladinanta oka jati gurinchi anukunte ganaka telugu anedi oka bhasha gurinchi anukochandi adi is there a good way of saying that antra anedi ippudu varaku nenu oka jati ani kuda antaraledu it is a consolidation of people bharata it cannot be called a jati ఒక తెగ కాదు మా రకరకాల తెగలు ఉన్నారు పలు తెగలు ఎందుకంటే మహాభారతం క్లియర్ గా చెప్తుంది ఆంధ్రశ్చ బహవ అంటుంది అంటే ఆంధ్రాస్ ఆర్ మెనీ సో వి కెనాట్ సే దట్ ఐ మీన్ ఇట్ వాజ్ వన్ సింగిల్ జాతి వాళ్ళందరిలో అందరూ తెలుగు మాట్లాడి ఉండొచ్చు మాట్లాడారా లేదా అని కూడా చెప్పలేమండి వీ కెన్ ఆల్వేస్ ట్రై అండ్ ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ ద యాంటిక్విటీ ఆఫ్ తెలుగు and the antiquities of andras and position them in certain geographical region and make it kind of deduction adhe le na rakarakala bhashalu and ani dravida bhashalu migithavi maatladana oka oka dani meeda koyili sayar melle melle ga telugu meeda anukochu meeru konni mood slides chupichanu indus valley civilization came to an end around 1400 bc and the period both mainstream uh, historians as well as alternate historians they agree that indus valley was the place where dravidian languages were spoken at one point of time we go uh, our slide law 1400 bc manam oka harappa nagarikata kshetramlo both aryan languages and dravidian languages coexisted ane oka theory undi it was only dravidian languages no aryan languages at that point of time ane idu uppo theory so manam manaki uh, let us not get into that controversy we will only look at the dravidian languages macalpin ane aina elamite languages nunchi dravidian languages so indus valley area ku vachayi around 3000 bc ko then around 14 and after the uh, late harappan period they moved into the rest of peninsula in the rest of india vitlo mood streams kanipistayi undi tarvata manaki puranic references also show that yadavas lived in gujarat region manaki dwaraka also is in gujarat hmm. so this yadavas probably were the uh, pro territories of the dravidian speaking people unkoti manaku deeniki reference entante oka sangam text undi tol kappiyam antaru vallu kaani daniki asalu actual name is toli kavyam which is basically toli is a very clear telugu word kavyam ile tatsamam hmm ee toli kavyanni lo em anuntundante tirupati ki uttarana vadagara వచ్చారు వీళ్ళు ఐందేర్ వేల అంటే ఐదుగురు వీరులు తువరకై అంటే ద్వారక నుంచి వచ్చి తిరుపతికి ఉత్తరాన్ని 
డిక్లర్ అయ్యారు అండి తిరుపతి ఉత్తరాంధ్ర ఏముందండి మన తెలుగు అండ్ కన్నడ రీజియన్స్ సో ఆల్ దీస్ రిఫరెన్సెస్ సే దట్ దీస్ యాదవాస్ వర్ ద ప్రొజెనిటర్స్ ఆఫ్ వేరియస్ ద్రవిడియన్ స్పీకింగ్ పీపుల్ మనకి భద్రాద్ కృష్ణమూర్తి గారు తర్వాత ఏమో ప్రిన్స్ ప్రిన్స్టన్ యూనివర్సిటీ నుంచి లేడీ వీళ్ళ ఈ రీసెర్చ్ అంతా దే హ్ గివెన్ సమ్ డేట్ లైన్ ఐ మీన్ టైమ్ లైన్స్ అనమాట ఈ టైమ్ లైన్స్ ప్రకారం ఈ లాంగ్వేజెస్ లో మొత్తం మూడు మూడు ఉన్నాయి ఆ మూడు ఒకటి నార్త్ ద్రవిడియన్ ఈస్టర్న్ ద్రవిడియన్ అండ్ సదర్న్ ద్రవిడియన్ ఈ మూడిట్లో ఈస్టర్న్ ద్రవిడియన్ వాజ్ మనకి గా అనే పదాన్ని భాష అనుకుంటే నార్త్ భాష ఏమైంది వన్ గా అయింది ద్రవిడియన్ లో వడక్ వడకు వా ఈస్ నార్త్ కిళక్ ఈస్ ఈస్ట్ కిళింగ్ కళింగ్ గా అండ్ టెన్ గా ఈస్ ద సదర్న్ బ్రాంచ్ ఆఫ్ లాంగ్వేజెస్ సో ది సదర్న్ బ్రాంచ్ బ్రాంచ్ ఆఫ్ లాంగ్వేజెస్ existed almost around 1400 bc mm. from which all the other languages came at that point of time itself the name probably was tenga mm. and this tenga got divided into south central and southern uh, languages the south central languages the major language group was Mag- language was telugu and gondi mm. and from this the next other branch out this thing is a proto kannada family this probably happened this particular thing must have happened around 800 bc these are all i mean linguists have told i mean i don't know anything about badiraj krishnamurthy is very very clear about this dates so 800 bc ke ten telugu that is, uh, which is telugu gondi is already separated and became an independent language and it kept on evolving so ivala manam oka 10 years back vishwanath cinema lo paata vinte chaala mandi ardham kada just because we cannot understand that language we cannot say that the language is different nenu ippudu meeku oka srinadhu padyam cheptanu ardham chesukovalante manamu ఇది తెలుగు డిక్షనరీ చూడాలి అన్నమయ్య పాటలు మనం పాడుకుంటున్నాం అన్నమయ్య పాటలు మనకు అర్థం కావాలంటే దానికి ఒక డిక్షనరీ కావాలి సో దిస్ లాంగ్వేజ్ ఇస్ బీన్ ఇవాల్వింగ్ వెరీ ఫాస్ట్ సో టుడే వీ కెనాట్ సిట్ అండ్ సే దాట్ ఐ కెనాట్ అండర్స్టాండ్ సో ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ తెలుగు సో దిస్ ప్రోటో లాంగ్వేజ్ మూల భాష అనేది ఎయిట్ హండ్రెడ్ బీసీకే ఫామ్ అయింది ఇది ఎక్కడ ఫామ్ అయింది గోదావరి కృష్ణ అప్పర్ రీచ్ ఆఫ్ గోదావరి కృష్ణ to the east coast where most of the megalithic uh, archaeological sites are today so quranic reference as well as mahabharata references to where andhra people were and where this language the south i mean uh, the south central uh, dravidian was spoken is the same this language was nothing but the mola telugu or i mean the proto telugu or the early telugu so the people who live who call themselves andras from banwasi that is from goa to uh, north of bombay and from here uh, from nellore to uh, let's say i mean godavari all these people probably spoke a language which was an early form of telugu then there is one more legend which talks about uh, and- andhra language was taught to the people of kalinga this is again kalinga was the eastern dravidian i mean even uh, oriya has got a very strong substratum of uh, dravidian languages dravidian lexicon uh you know nandikeshwara was the grammarian who actually teaches the grammar to the kalinga region and then includes the entire area into one particular language group called a telugu a proto telugu probably it had the entire northern karnataka goa uh, maharashtra 
parts of Gujarat, uh, the entire Chhattisgarh, Bastar, and all this region, and all the way to Punjab in the east. This entire region, or the up to Kanchi in the south, was Telugu speaking or a proto Telugu speaking. That's the reason why these people, Chatavanas, were able to easily unite this part of the country into one single empire. Kabate Manavante. Sathava Hanulu, Andrulu, and Yip established Jesum, Alage, Telugu Pasha, which in the established Jesum, Travata, Sathava Hala Kalaniki, E language la Greva Indo, Agalanikam Santan in Jesum. Any chase in the Rata, Monk ultimate conclusion in the inescapable conclusion evident Taganaka, Sathava Hala Telugu Alde, Vale Andrulu, Kavala martyred in Telugu Pasha, Telugu Pasha Rosa, and Sathava Hala Empire Motala, Telugu Pasha martyred ever. Okay, older form of Telugu, and I'm going to establish this. One more important thing. I'm going to ask you about the Prakrutan. So, I'm going to tell you about the Prakrutan. 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 When they came to rule, they came to rule from their Molasthanam, which was in Krishna Delta and Shepkuna. Uh -huh. So, Ashokan period, ke, Krishna Delta, Prakrit Shasnam with a Telugu Lipi, and a Telugu variation. Uh -huh. And the Prakrit is already arrived. Uh -huh. By around 400 BC, the uh -huh. The language, which was the lingua franca of India, which was spoken, like I mean, if we go by what Yuan Sang had said, it was spoken even in Kashgar and parts of Tibet and Western China. Mm -hmm. And it was spoken in Inter China, Northern Burma. And it was sp spoken also in the major parts of Persia and in entire Northern India. This has become a kind of lingua franca. Today, I mean, I am speaking to you in English. So, the, at that point of time, Prakrit was the lingua franca of the people. And the Prakrit is a standardized language, or region, region, and Martha. And the Sanskrit is a language. I am not sure. I am not sure. I am not sure. I am not sure. Lucknow Urdu is different from Hyderabad Urdu and Bangalore Urdu. Prakrutalo, Rakarakala Prakrutalo, Magathi, Saurusani, and Manavinto, and Prakrutalo. Very simple, and this Saurashtra, Magadha, then I mean, there is something called Arthamagadi, then there is Saurusani, Saurusani is which is again, I mean, Eastern Rajasthan. Then, I mean, we have uh, a variation in Vidarbha, and there is a, there are, there, are, there is something called Tamil Prakrit, these people keep on saying. I mean, I don't know what it was, it's an oxymoron, but, mm. but the regional variations do happen. Mm. So, but the thing is, anybody who can speak Hindi can understand the Hindi spoken by a, person sitting in Madurai or in Guntur and similarly a person who is sitting in Gujarat. Today, I mean, we watch a Hindi movie, I mean, which is mostly Punjabi dialect. And the Prakrutanik Raja Bhasha lag of respect to the Rosalo, Kavati, Gata Satashidan, Rasa, and Raja Bhasha, Anam. In the country, we do our time low on the inscriptions, so the 80% of the inscriptions are not royal inscriptions. They were made by common people like you and me, merchants, artisans. Uh -huh. They are the major contributors to the inscriptions in those periods, the Dhapatis. Uh -huh. So I don't see any reason why, I mean, I should say that, I mean, it should be attributed to the king, I mean, royal patronage. Rajabhaj and now there is an administrative language. It's an easy to understand language, and it is one common language. I, I don't think I mean the administrative language was Prakrit. Uh, 
because if you again you see the administrative text at that point of time were all written in sanskrit uh arthashastra was in sanskrit right okay and uh, nagarjuna has written everything in sanskrit in spite of being a, a buddhist monk mm. kabati prakrutalu telugu sanskritam ee moodu kuda coexist aini aa time lo manaki ante ee shatavahanala samrajyamlo shatavahanala samrajyame kaadu across india they coexisted because we have andakas living in patna vaishali wherever these people went they spoke ipudu meer bolu meer dallas lo meer nalugu kuchoni ee telugu maatladinatlu akada telugu maatladinatlu mm ఇప్పుడు మనకి ఒక క్వశ్చన్ అండి మొన్న మీరు చెప్పిన మాటే గుణార్చుడు బృహత్ కథ అన్నాం కదా దాంట్లో అతను మూడు భాషలు వదిలేస్తాడు గుణార్చుడు అంటే పన్ను ఓడిపోయినందుకు నాకు కాబట్టి నాకు చదివినప్పుడు వచ్చిన మొట్టమొదటి డౌట్ ఏంటంటే ఆ దేశం అనేది అక్కడ తెలియనా అనేది ఆయన సంస్కృతం probably at a point of time when uh, telugu is divided from uh, the tamil kannada proto tamil kannada and also probably from gondi mm. and uh, one more thing from gunadya's uh, this thing the desi and paisachi probably were the two uh, early forms of telugu and gondi Mm-hmm. so we don't know there is a lot of conjecture that we have to make one thing that we know is based on the linguists we have some certain timelines based on the uh, inscriptions we have certain timelines and based on the literature we have certain timelines if we match all these things the geographical canvas that is shown as andhra region also had a proto telugu spoken so we can safely assume that andhras were telugu speaking as a people a large set of people uh, on that note mano first part mano oka oka vishayam entante and their point of origin is the krishna delta region dwipa dhanya kataka that is where amravati we have the northern black polish way and beyond so the civilization the origin of civilization in southern peninsula was nothing but dhanya kataka and amravati